Reading from Diodorus Siculus, Greek historian of 1st century BCE, he states, Osiris being coming to the borders of Ethiopia, raised high banks on either side of the river Lys, in the time of his inundation, it should overflow the country more than was convenient and make it marshy and boggy, and made floodgates to let in the water by degrees as far as was necessary. This he passed through Arabia, boarding upon the Red Sea as far as to India, and the utmost coasts that were inhabited. He built likewise many cities in India, one of which he called Naza, willing to have a remembrance of that in Egypt where he was brought up. At this Naza in India he planted ivy, which grows the remains here only of all of the places in India or the parts adjacent. He, le he left likewise many of the marks of his being in those parts by which the latter inhabitants are induced to believe and do affirm that this God was born in India. Here is the documentation from the first century BEC, BCE where the Greek historian is relating to us the information of this black god, Asa, who had educated even the Indian. And that god Asa became Krishna in the Indian realm. And you see that the Indians paint themselves black to remember the great god Asa. Krishna means black in Sanskrit. It means black. And this is where the Ethiopians who created the Hindu Kush civilization in that area came from up out of the Nile. So we have to understand that all of these civilizations are given birth to by the Nile Valley Africans. You see right here where it says DNA traces Chinese back to Africa. They didn't say Mesopotamia. They didn't say Europe or the Americas. It said the Chinese trace their lineage back to Africa. What you're looking at is the step pyramid style of the Asian architecture. This is what you're looking at. So even the step pyramid uh, uh, African architecture even went into India. What you're looking at is the nappy-headed Buddhas that were nothing more than the representations of the black god Asa that had went into India and raised up the Indian, the black Indians over in that realm. And they put the woolly hair on his head, the thick and the broad nose, to give you the recognition of the African that was in that realm long before what you see, the straight hair Indian of today. Here you see Buddha painted green, just like Asa sometimes is painted green to represent the vegetation, the life force that comes up out of the black earth to give our people the necessary nourishment. Here again you're looking at the black African, Nile Valley Africans that have moved off into the realms of West Asia and you can see all in their facial expression the thick lip, the broad nose and the woolly hair. These are the true founders of that nation which you call Hindu Kush or India. Here you're looking at Paka which is a king in the Americas to show that the green was a representation of a saw. So a saw was even worshipped in the Americas. Again, to see the corn roll, woolly hair, Buddhas that were worshipped. And Buddha is, and Krishna are only representations of the great black god Asa. Here you see the, the Nagas of India who paint themselves up as black as a remembrance of the great god Asa. Before there was the Nagas, you got to see that this knowledge came up out of the Nile Valley. The Nagas is a representation of Nekbet, which is the Koba goddess that is upon the black Sutan's headdress to let you know that they are protected by that African woman. Here you're looking at uh, the representation of the Africans on the wall. Pay close attention to that red dye, that red dye that even the Africans use back home on the continent. Here it is. They use the same red dye in Africa that they use in India. Again, we're going back to the step pyramid architecture that come up out of the, uh, out of the Nile that was first created by the great architect multi-genius 
Imhotep. Again, we're looking at the Buddha, the woolly-headed Buddha, the uh, the Christ of India and the West Asia, along with Krishna, which is a representation of the black god Asa. It was these Nile Valley Africans that moved from not the Nile Valley into Mesopotamia and then went into India and then went into China. The man that you see there today was not always there. Again, we're looking at the uh, step pyramid architecture, even though it's not used in stone, it's still a representation of the step pyramid. And a, another worship, the worship of the golden calf that is in India. It comes from the worship of Hederu that was taken into India by Asa and the Nile Valley Africans, the Ethiopians, that moved into that realm and started the Indian Kushite, Hindu Kushite civilization. The Nagas is a representation of Nekbet, the, the female deity that protects the Sutans that is above their headdress. And they took this into India, China, Mesopotamia. You see it all over the world. But what must be known is that it first started in the Nile Valley. What you're looking at right here is Angkor Wat. Look at the water, uh, the sacred lake, and then look at Waset. It's the same setup, and you got to see that. Now look at the pyramid in the back, and then look at the obelisk. It is nothing but a Tekken. You got to understand that what you're seeing is Nile Valley science. All of the pyramid shapes in the architecture. This is a uh, representation of of the origins of where they came from. That they came up out of the Nile Valley where the pyramid was the main type of structure that was designed for the Sultans for a very long time. So they took this knowledge into West Asia, Mesopotamia, China, and India. So when you look at this, you're not just looking at something that's abstract. This is your history, but you got to trace it back to the Nile Valley. You got to always see it from the Grand Lodge and not the subordinate lodge. George M. James said that there was only one Grand Lodge in the ancient world, and that was Waset. And what you're looking at here is subordinate lodges, minor lodges where the priests went out all around the world and established these lodges. And when you look at Buddha and you're looking at Krishna and you're looking at uh, uh, Jesus and, and all of these figures, they represent nothing more than a, a priest that had been educated in the Nile and took that knowledge back home to where he originated from. But they had all gotten their ed education in the Nile. So the Nile, again, is nothing but a representation of Nekbet, even the mother great mother, divine mother, mother and child that came up out of the Nile Valley as Aset and Horus. This even went into India and China. It is nothing but a representation of the great queen Aset and the holy virgin born son Heru. Here you're looking at the Buddha with the short dreadlocks. If you ever seen somebody that has short dreadlocks very close to their head, this is what they look like. This Buddha has the short, crisp dreadlocks. Another step pyramid design in the pagoda. The, the Chinese, Japanese, and West Asian pagoda. It is nothing but a form of the step pyramid. You got to understand this. So when Diorio Siculus, the, who, who documents in the first century that the great god king Asa had went all around the world, in that same uh, uh, chapter, it states that he went all around the world and educated the world how to feed themselves. So this was documented in the first century A.D. And then you got Jesse the Jerusalem Muslim and uh, Father Kabbalah, another fake-ass scholar, the see-through Hebrew, that want to come 3,000 years later and rewrite our history. Here is a black uh, Chinese that was taken in the San Francisco Museum having discussion with the lighter skinned Chinese. Here's another rep representation of the black god Krishna, who is nothing but a representation 
of the great god of Saul that came up out of the Nile. Here you see another Sutin with neck back, the, god, the, the, the cobra goddess above his head, where the Naga came from up out of West Asia. Neck bet is not a Naga now, but that is where the Naga came from. As it went into Asia, it took on its own characteristic. But in the Nile Valley, it is a representation of the great goddess Neck Bet. Hotel family.